Hey guys, Tech Rally here and welcome to the Tech Rally channel where we talk about coding, life as a developer, and tips and tricks for aspiring developers to succeed. I'm starting the Ultimate Coding Bootcamp review series where I take a look at coding bootcamps, break it down for you by a certain list of criteria, and give my final thoughts. If you find content like this interesting, I highly recommend you to hit that like and subscribe so you can stay up to date whenever I do post. To me, not all coding boot camps are equal. There are some really good quality boot camps, but there are also very, very horrible, bad experience boot camps that do exist. The purpose of this series is to give you my insight on how I break down coding boot camps. But I do want to clarify that as much as I think this review will be helpful for you, you should ultimately be responsible for you to do your own research. I highly encourage you to email and call the school to get more information, read honest reviews online, and even talk to alumni before taking that leap of faith. Coding boot camps are not cheap and it will be a shame if you wasted not only your money, but your time with a bad coding bootcamp. These are the criteria I would use at a high level, but it can't hurt to get more detail and do your own due diligence. With that out of the way, let's start our first review and we got none other than Coder Foundry based in Kernsville, North Carolina. So we're gonna start off on my criteria on how I would review a coding bootcamp. My criteria are separate it into seven different categories. The first is going to be just an introduction and the location of the coding bootcamp. The second will be the technology in the stack. The third is the instructor experience. The four is the acceptance rate. Five is class quality. Six is the cost. And seven, I kind of lumped them together, which is the post-grad job support, salaries, and outcomes. I'm going to give it a rating from a one to five scale where five is the highest and one is the lowest and three will be just more of a neutral sentiment. When I give something a three rating, it's generally neutral and I don't really feel a big positive reaction or a big negative reaction to it. So first, let's go over the introduction and location. So Coder Foundry was founded in 2014 and the co-founder is Bobby Davis. They also have a YouTube channel where they give tips and tricks on how to become a software developer. And I highly recommend you to subscribe to their channel as well because they are really focused in helping you become a software developer and not make the mistakes that most self-taught developers make and why um, certain coding strategies or certain learning strategies are more superior than the others. The Coding Bootcamp is located in Kernsville, North Carolina. As of 2020, classes are 100% virtual, but previously it was a in-person bootcamp. In terms of the location itself, the pros of a in-person education at Kernsville, North Carolina is that the cost of living will be significantly less compared to somewhere in New York City or San Francisco. Another pro is that you're going to have less distractions so you can really stay focused on coding and just trying to be that software developer during that bootcamp experience. Some of the cons is that the in-person education could be less appealing for out-of-state residents in comparison to San Francisco and New York. If you think about it, a lot of the jobs do exist in San Francisco, the Silicon Valley, or even in New York City, some of the more highly populated cities. But to counter that, not as many jobs in Kernsville, but cities like Charlotte and Raleigh are close by. So there are definitely jobs that do exist in the North Carolina space. For my rating, I give it a three out of five. It really just depends on what kind of job you're looking for. And in terms of breadth and availability, I would still say that there are probably more jobs in the Bay Area or even in New York City. So the next category is technology and stack. Coder Foundry is more unique in a sense that they teach a C Sharp with a JavaScript stack mixed with CSS and HTML. The frameworks that they use is .NET 5 and ASP.NET via Razor Pages. They do deployments through Heroku and Netlify. And in terms of database, they use SQL and Postgres. Right now, in terms of JavaScript, they do a vanilla ES6, but they're transitioning into TypeScript for 2021. And one thing that I do really appreciate is that they're always changing their curriculum. So in this case, they did remove jQuery, which they probably implemented because not as many companies are valuing jQuery skills as much. So pros and cons again. The pros is that c -sharp developer jobs are high in demand everywhere like Amazon, Microsoft, Walmart, banks like Amex, Morgan Stanley. So there are definitely prevalent amount of jobs for c -sharp developers. 
Some of the cons with this kind of technology stack, in my opinion, is that there's no emphasis on a front end framework like React, Vue, or Angular. In this day and age, a lot of jobs are looking for some specialization in a front end framework like a React developer or a Vue developer. I personally don't agree with this notion that you are a React developer or a Vue developer, but if you see the job market and if you see how job listings are posted, sometimes there's a huge emphasis on a React developer. In this case, I'm going to give this rating a four out of five. C Sharp is still a high in demand job. So from that perspective, you'll still have a lot of opportunities to get that first job because you're learning a language that's really highly sought after. Third thing we're gonna be talking about is the instructor experience. And I really love this part specifically with Coder Foundry. If you go on their website and get their curriculum and information, right off the bat, you can already see who the instructors are gonna be. There are times with growing coding boot camps where you join a coding boot camp, but you have no idea who your instructor is gonna be. Sometimes I've heard horror stories where instructors would leave in the middle of a coding bootcamp curriculum. You really don't want something like that. And in this case, I feel very comfortable about recommending Coder Foundry from an instructor experience because these are the people that have taught the curriculum and they still continue to this day teach the curriculum. In terms of number of years of experience, they have 20 years of experience in software development each. There is a instructor and teacher assistance program where previous Coder Foundry graduates or outside hires will be teacher's assistants. So they're not actually teaching the class, but they will help you with your coding assignments. So pros and cons, pros, the longevity of the staff. So they've been together since 2016. Other boot camps have a difficult time retaining their instructors because generally when you're a good teacher and you know it, Individually, you probably want to move on to a separate company that will pay you more, things like that. And that could lead to inexperienced instructors that don't have proven track records to get you job ready when they replace a good instructor with someone that might have a significantly less work experience. The cons, I really couldn't find any because I find a lot of value that you're going to have experienced instructors and people that I could actually visually see in terms of faces and being mentally prepared to know that these are going to be my instructors. Moving on to the next category is the acceptance rate. So this part is a bit difficult for aspiring developers that want to join a bootcamp, but it's intentionally meant to be this way. So the first thing you have to do is actually take a developer quiz that's required by the Coder Foundry. So if you get a 80% or higher, then maybe coding is for you. If you don't get an 80%, then maybe coding may not be for you, but you could still apply. The average number of applications that Coder Foundry gets is about 150 applications, and they generally accept around 30. There is a personal connection to each applicant because they're going to be a smaller class. In terms of the application process, you're gonna get interviewed with a one-on-one. -on -one. They're gonna measure your motivation on why do you wanna join this coding bootcamp. Do you just want to learn code for the sake of coding or is this a life-changing experience for you to change your career? In other words, if you want to join this coding bootcamp, you have to sell yourself saying that this is my career change. This is my life change. If you want to learn how to code just for the sake of coding, then you're free to just learn online, self-paced bootcamps, anything that really doesn't have that pressure for you to professionally become a software developer. Coder Foundry, is looking for individuals that want to change their lives. After you get accepted, there is a prerequisite requirement to take a 10-day JavaScript course. I'm giving this acceptance rate a five out of five. Yes, it kind of sucks that you might not get accepted, but at the same time, there is a strong focus of not necessarily just being the smartest applicant, but measuring your motivation. And I think as long as you show that you are motivated and you do want to attend this coding bootcamp for the right reasons, I can't see why you wouldn't get selected. All right, next criteria, class quality. This is a 12 week curriculum and the curriculum revolves around units of work. And I'll explain that in further, but essentially you're gonna have five mini projects and three main projects. The three main projects are going to be initiated by the school itself. And you essentially do some kind of financial portal, some kind of bug tracker and some bug software. The number of hours that you should expect to work per week is going to be about 50 to 60 hours per week. And when I attended a coding bootcamp school, I probably was working about 80 to 90 hours a week, including weekends. 
The one thing that I want to highlight that I love about this coding bootcamp right now is there is no overlapping classes. And that's super important to me because when I initially joined my coding bootcamp, there was no overlapping classes. And the major appeal about not having overlapping classes is that you know that the whole company is focused on you and your batch of students. So in a sense, Coder Foundry is valuing quality over quantity. It is possible to fail while you're attending the coding bootcamp. The passing criteria is on a basis of meeting specific deliverables. The last thing that they do is emphasize a star coder. And in this scenario, what students do is they pitch a project to their instructors on a specific work that they did. It essentially prepares you for a technical interview. It prepares you to talk about your code. It's just a basic intermediary step to make you comfortable and make you comfortable in front of people in a kind of uncomfortable situation. Tech interviews are really hard, so if you can squeeze in any little bit of just preparation or work, that's always valuable. The one thing I want to emphasize here are the three main projects. A lot of coding boot camps, they kind of give you the freedom to do whatever project you want. As great as it sounds to work on a project that you're passionate about, it might actually hurt you in the long run in terms of finding a job. And what I mean by that is you want to build projects that are relevant to the people that are trying to hire you. So say you're into rock climbing and you build a rock climbing app where other people can go rock climbing together and schedule events together. I think that sounds really cool. And if I was into it, I would use it, but not everybody is a rock climber. And if a recruiter or some hiring manager sees that, they might not know the value of the project. But what Coder Foundry does is they've already identified projects that are relatable to everyone. Everyone wants to know if they're being financially responsible. If you're working in a company, a bug tracker is perfect for you to use to make sure, hey, like, did we identify all the bugs that currently exist in our application? Let's create a ticketing system so that we can streamline our projects to make sure that we're not missing anything amongst team members. So I do appreciate the value where Coder Foundry is pushing you in a direction to do specific projects as opposed to you coming up with yourself. What you're trying to do after you graduate is find a job. And if you build projects that aren't really relevant or just kind of feels like a, a side app, then I'm not sure how recruiters or even hiring managers will view that application. Moving on to the next criteria is the cost. And if you pay upfront, then that will be $15,000. You could do an income share agreement where you do no payment upfront, but essentially you pay 15% of your income for three years or a max cap of $25,000. The minimum salary requirement for you to trigger an ISA is $40,000 a year minimum. My personal recommendation is if you can afford it, just pay upfront because personally for me, I've had my opinions about income share agreements and I have two links. One is a income share agreement calculator that calculates the cost of living versus your salary living in New York City. I guess the one caveat behind this is that if you're living in an area that the cost of living is significantly less, then you could definitely figure out ways to live while having an income share agreement. But it's just very dangerous because you don't realize how much 15% of your income is on a per paycheck basis. So if you can afford it, I would recommend paying upfront. And from that perspective, that's why I give this criteria a four out of five. All right, last category, post-grad job support, salaries, and outcomes. So what Coder Foundry does is they provide a demo day. And this is where graduates can show potential employers, their projects, and things that they've been working on. The invitation is sent to about eight to 10 employees with a .NET job needs. Bootcamp develops relationships with local and national companies to hire bootcamp grads. There's a dedicated staff to help bootcamp graduates. Since there are no overlapping classes and smaller number of graduates, it allows for more dedicated commitment. I've talked to Natasha before and she has over 17 years of experience as a recruiter. So she's definitely familiar with the landscape and building relationships between the boot camps and employers. Around 86% placed in software developer roles. And I personally am okay with that number. I think a lot of times some coding boot camps inflate their numbers of what is really considered a job placement. And 86% seems more realistic from my perspective. Average salaries is 50 to 55,000 a year. And this is really considering location and cost of living considerations. Prior to going full virtual, I assume a lot of the graduates did stay somewhat local when finding a job. 
So the cost of living would be significantly less than that of San Francisco and New York City. From that perspective, 50 to 55,000 a year is doable. But also remember the ISA if you do take that route. The Coder Foundry mindset is not necessarily getting a job that will give you 100K a year, but it's the road to 100K. I completely agree with this mindset. When I graduated from a coding bootcamp, I didn't necessarily make 100K a year. I worked my way with a decent salary, but not 100K, and then worked my way up to a more uh, respectable salary. For this category, I will give this a five out of five. I wanna elaborate a little bit more beyond these slides of why I'm giving this a five out of five. And after talking to a few coding bootcamp grads, not from Coder Foundry, what I noticed is that a lot of these coding bootcamps, they scale very, very quickly and grow very quickly. And then unfortunately, as you start accepting a lot more students, there's less dedicated focus or need to really think about those students after they graduate. What Coder Foundry does that I think is very unique is that they actually have a dedicated staff to help kind of give you those introductions to companies. But what a lot of coding boot camps are doing now is they have this system where you have a career coach that goes over your resume with you and kind of gives you that mock interview feeling, but they don't necessarily help you find a job. They're not telling you you should apply here or they're not really giving you those kind of introductions, which I think is super crucial for coding boot camps to do at this moment. A lot of discussions I had with coding boot camp graduates from other schools is that they just feel like they're alone and they have no real support from the bootcamp schools. If you find a coding bootcamp that does have a dedicated staff that has a small number of students, those are the ones that I feel like are more valuable than the ones that have a bigger name but are just churning out a bunch of students. When you talk to a coding bootcamp advisor, ask them specifically, like what are your criteria or what do you do after you graduate? What kind of support are you actually getting? Am I alone and do I only just get a career coach who's just gonna give me advice about what I need to do or am I going to get some kind of introduction to companies? Am I gonna get those demo days? Like those are the specific questions you need to ask your future coding bootcamp school that you wanna to apply to. So in summary, in my opinion, Coder Foundry is a great opportunity for you to become a software developer in 2020, 2021. You can get a job in any location after you land that first job. So if you feel like, oh, am I just going to get a job in North Carolina? Don't think like that. Just try to land that first job and then you could figure out what you want to do afterwards. In terms of the staff and teaching, I really believe that they are a very experienced staff. And like I said before, as boot camps scale, the quality does tend to go down. But Coder Foundry does the opposite where they do low volume, high cost where most scaling boot camps, they do high volume, low cost. There are no overlapping classes at this moment, and that leads to higher dedication towards current students. They enforce a mindset of where you build real world projects versus just fun apps. And it's better to enforce projects that show coding capabilities and relevancy versus a feelings of a side project that no one's really gonna be using. Like I said, since there are no overlapping students, that allows the career service team to really focus on each graduate. I added a few cons at the end in that learning two languages can be tough for a new prospective student. So learning C Sharp and JavaScript can be difficult. And lastly, I mentioned this before about the technology and stack. The curriculum does not include a front end framework like React, Angular, or Vue, but overall C Sharp is still high in-demand skill sought out by employers. From my point of view, who has seen the landscape of coding boot camps change, I feel that Coder Foundry represents a minority that values their students versus just trying to grow at all cost. And from a student perspective, I think that that is the most valuable asset that you could have when looking for a coding boot camp. You want a coding boot camp that's dedicated to you as much as you are to them. And when I see this curriculum, when I see how there are no overlapping classes, it makes me feel that if a student does join Coder Foundry, they're going to get the most dedicated attention from the staff and the career service team. So yeah, that's my summary. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you're looking into Coder Foundry as a potential coding bootcamp school that you wanted to apply to or even attend, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you want me to review another coding bootcamp school, let me know and I will try to get that information going. Either way, hope you like the content. I'll see you in the next video. Tech Rally out.